Aliases are used in SQL to create a temporary name for a column or table. The syntax for aliasing columns as well as tables is the same. You simply type the column or table name, followed by the as keyword, and then the alias name. In some databases you can omit the as keyword, but for the purposes of this tutorial we will define our aliases using as. So let's start by looking at how to alias a column name. Generally, aliases are used to make the column headings in your result set easier to read. Most commonly, you might alias a column when using an aggregate function such as min, max, average, sum, or count in your query. So let's get started. Here we have a table called employees containing the following data. Let's write a select statement that counts the number of employees in each department. In order to do this, you will need to use the count function. We'll start by entering select department ID, comma, count asterisk from employees, group by department ID. Currently, we aren't using any aliases in this SQL statement, but we want to show you what the result set looks like to help you better understand why you might want to use a column alias. When we run this select statement, we will get two columns and a result set. The first column is the department ID, and the second column is the results of the count function that displays the number of employees in that department. Notice that the column heading in the results say count asterisk. Let's use an alias to rename the second column heading to something more meaningful. So we'll go back to our original select statement, and after the count asterisk, we will enter as total. Now when we rerun this query, our column heading will say total instead of count asterisk. Now before moving on, let's look at how to create a column alias that contains spaces. Let's rewrite our query and include a space in the column alias. Again, we will enter select department ID, comma, count asterisk, but this time we will enclose our alias name in quotes. So we will enter as quote, total employees, quote. Notice the space between the words total and employees. And then we'll finish the rest of the SQL statement as before. When this query is run, total employees will become the heading for the second column in our result set. So the general rule here is that if your alias contains a space, you must enclose the alias name in quotes. However, it is okay to enclose the alias name in quotes even if there are no spaces. It's your choice. Now let's move on and look at how to alias a table name. When you alias a table, it is either because you plan to list the same table more than once in the from clause, in other words, a self-join, or you want to shorten the table name to make the SQL statement shorter and easier to read. Let's start with two tables, products and categories. We'll write a query that joins these two tables together and uses aliases for the table names. We'll use the first letter of the table name as the alias name. So for example, we will use an alias of P for the products table and an alias of C for the categories table. We will start by entering select p.productName, comma c.categoryName. Since our tables are now called P for the products table and C for the categories table, you will use the alias name instead of the original table name when referring to these tables in the query. Next, we will enter from products as P. This defines P as the alias for the products table. Let's interjoin to the categories table by entering interjoin categories as C on P.categoryID equals C.categoryID. And let's apply a where clause by entering where P.productName not equal to pair in single quotes. When we run this query, we will get five records in our result set. In this example, we alias both of our tables, but it is important to mention that if you do choose to create table aliases, you do not have to create aliases for all of the tables listed in your from clause. You can choose to create aliases on any or all of the tables. This covers a few examples of how to create column and table aliases. If you would like to see more examples, or would like to download the sample data we used for this tutorial, please visit our website at techonthenet.com. You can also try the examples in our SQL editor on our website. Look for the Try It button next to each example. If you found our tutorial helpful, please leave a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
for more great SQL tutorials.